get there. We'll just kind of set the stage, make sure you guys are in the right place at the right time. So hopefully we're coming across loud and clear on both YouTube and of course, uh, go to webinar. All right. So the first thing we always put first things first, right? And that is if there's one thing that I want you guys to understand, it's that we're no longer going to be fearful of market corrections because they present tremendous opportunity. So if you have a precise system, market bottoms create explosive profit potential. The whole key of course is being able to determine market bottoms with precision. And that's what we're going to be showing in this webcast here today. All right, great. Uh, so in order to make this a reality, this is the most challenging part. And that's what's known as a paradigm shift. If any of you have had Covey trading uh, for your successful business careers, I'm sure you're aware of the term paradigm shift. It's a new way of thinking, right? Is what that means. Paradigm shift is a new way of thinking. So we have to get rid of the old way and allow for the new way to sink in. And that can be, it's like trying to teach an old dog new tricks, dog and to new tricks. <laughs> so she's very much established in her ways, you know. But anyway, we're going to try to fix all of that today. We're going to get you trained up right. So my promise to you guys is you will learn how to acquire the skills necessary to nail market bottoms with precision in this webcast, okay? So that you'll never miss another explosive bottom fishing opportunity ever again. Of course, it's a deep subject. There's always more to learn, but we are going to hit the 30,000 foot view. And with what you learn here, uh, you can put it to use. There's just no two ways about it, uh, which is terrific. Okay. All right. So once again, my name is Steve Chappell, well, actually for the first time, I guess. And I am the director of trading systems development here at VectorVest. I've been with the company now for more than 20 years. And one of the things that uh, hopefully you'll find of interest is among many other things, uh, bottom fishing is something that I've taught from the very early stages on here uh, for those 20 years. And Dr. Delito uh, was kind enough to um, to bring me on board, of course, train me up, and I still we still do the same things 20 years later that we st started doing 20 years ago. You know, it's a it's a system that works if you do it right. So today is all about getting it right. <clears throat> Listen, I'm just a small part of a big, highly educated, uh, great team. And we all take pride in delivering the best stock market guidance you can get anywhere at any price. And so today is certainly going to be no exception. In fact, of all of our uh, webcasts that we do th these days, this one probably is up there with, you know, being the ones with the most value. Uh, so uh, it's free, which is uh, makes it uh, we're we're hitting the marks, you know. All right. So on our journey today, we're going to talk about the system we use, not just I, we used to make precise ent market entries at market bottoms. We're going to talk about the key attributes to pick the right stocks. And that's where the, this is where the paradigm shift occurs because we need to try to avoid buying falling knives. And that's where the tricky part comes in on the market entries. And at the same time, we're going to go about picking stocks in a slightly different way than many of you are going to be accustomed to, but it's going to be using VectorVest proprietary indicators to get the job done right. And so as VectorVest subscribers, you know, we have a decided advantage in, in really outperforming uh, when we do our stock picks the correct way. And so this is a very much a situational tactic, and you're only going to do what we're talking about in here under this situation. Uh, now, this situation tends to occur more than twice a year. Uh, there have been, I haven't counted them recently, but I'm just going to say more than 40 bottom fishing opportunities uh, two of them have been what you would call major market bottoms. Okay. But more than 40 opportunities, which is more than two a year over the past 20 years. Uh, so, uh, it is something that you're going to have in your toolbox. You're going to use it a couple of times a year on average, but the returns are spectacular. And so, uh, when the situation arises, you're going to want to take action. Uh, number three, we're going to learn some trading tactics that <clears throat> keep you down keep risk in line and also allow for more money to be made uh, by managing the stocks. So we're going to take a look at all of that and really give you <laughs> the full picture, uh, realizing that we're also going to present an opportunity where you can learn even more. But with just what you learn here, you're going to be well on your way. Okay. All right. So what's the hardest part of nailing market bottoms for you guys? Uh, kind of get the creative juices flowing, get your minds working, just chat it in. What's the, uh, the hardest part of nailing market bottoms for you guys. We'll take a minute here and I'll read back some of the, the entries if people are kind enough to put them in. 
So we'll give you a sec here. All right, Fail, I'm seeing things like failed ups, where to start, when and what to buy. I'm seeing, this is an interesting one from Hank. Uh, looks like an international, which is terrific. Uh, it's great to have you. It says, when does enough blood run through the streets? So you're leveraging that old statement by a very wise old investor, right? Warren Buffett. He says, the best time to buy stocks is when blood is in the streets. And he is right. He is oh so very right. And I hope at one point he gets a chance to see this webcast because, boy, we can really show you how to put that to use. <laughs> All right, so let's get to it. All right, thanks for that entry uh, there, Hank. That's awesome. All right, so let's start talking a little bit more about the paradigm shift and <clears throat> kind of lay it out visually for our visual learners uh, and not so much for the left brain folks who may have already figured it out. But uh, what we'll be talking about is moving away but only under these circumstances, only in these explicit situations that are a couple of times a year, moving away from our traditional approach, which is to buy safe, undervalued stocks rising in price. And with rising earnings, you know, that's going to keep that engine moving, keep that stock moving up the page higher and higher month after month, year after year. Uh, two, more explosive kinds of positions where blood has run through the streets. Uh, but deciphering value on the back side of that is where folks would have a lot of questions. In other words, are the stocks bloody because they should be, or are they just getting beaten down as a result of, you know, the economic backdrop? And so a couple of indicators in VectorVest are going to be able to leverage that one for the blood in the streets and another one for the value on the back side that can give you the kind of performance that you see just here with OVV. Uh, this was obviously a result of the COVID collapse. Uh, we all know what happened to oil prices uh, in the future from there. But this stock had a lot of value just simply in the current state of affairs with the, with the fall, the precipitous fall. This stock, if, you, if you're looking at the uh, legend, or a scaling rather, on the right-hand side of the screen there, this stock actually went up more than 1,000% in nine months. Okay, more than 1,000% in nine months. Uh, it's pretty challenging for your Teslas, your Apples, your Googles, your Visas of the world to do, isn't it? Right. So not saying you couldn't have made a lot of money with those guys. You certainly could have, but you could make even more if you get this right. So that's what we're going to be talking about in this webcast today is how to really maximize you know, these, these, these potentials uh, and, and make it work for you. All right. So what you're going to learn first and foremost, and this is really profound in everything that you do, is that timing is everything. So uh, being able to time the market is going to be critical here because if we don't get it right, it can lead to more blood very quickly. So um, it also typically means, you know, if things don't start clicking right out of the gate, that you ought to shut it down and look for the next low <laughs> that's on its way and a better opportunity, you know. And so there will be times where a stock market will ultimately work its way to a lower low, even in what looks like, uh, you know, the potential uh, bottom. Uh, you need to have a lot of confidence in understanding that if you go up to bat the next time, the returns are even better than what you would have had the first time, right? And so uh, this is not a situation where it's a bad thing. <laughs> what you learn, you, I hate to say it this way, but you almost start to become a cheerleader for low, exuberantly lower stock prices in the market because you realize then on the back side of that, that the rewards are just that much greater you know, the lower the stock market ultimately goes. Um, so, uh, yeah, let's just leave it at that for now. So the traditional approach here, a lot of market analysts and things will use traditional types of applications to try to decipher pricing structure and bottoms and things. And you guys know the story before I lay it out here. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time belaboring this. I am a market technician. I understand the value of manipulating look back periods. And it, it, look, it just doesn't matter. This is incomplete. It's not enough. Uh, more is necessary in order to be able to time a market bottom with precision. This works extraordinarily well on the stock level. You know, uh, when you start to get to the market level, not so much, you know, not as much. So let's, um, let's move through that story pretty quickly because the result is bad entries. 
the whole thought process of, well, I can't be wrong. We're already on an extreme. So you stick with it. It just gets bloodier and so on. So as I mentioned, it's because the timing is off that you get the bad result. And the problem is it's incomplete, as I mentioned as well. So we're going to talk about how to complete it, you know, how to fix that problem. You can't just do it with a stochastics or a MACD or even a combination of those things. You're going to need VectorVest to do it the way that you know, we've established over the years. And so uh, we're going to lay it out. Ultimately, it's the system that's going to determine your success, not you. So it's your ability to stick to the system. Uh, so you need to build up some trust and some faith. And for some of you, that means investigate it even further, you know, after this webcast is over. I encourage you to do that. Many of you won't uh, because it takes work, you know, but you're going to see enough evidence, hopefully, in this webcast to start building some of that faith and some of that trust. Okay, so we're going to keep it simple. It's not complicated. Uh, that's another thing to know right out of the gate. It's real easy to do. And when we get to the actual technique, we're going to be going at a nice, friendly pace. Uh, so nobody's going to be left behind. Okay. I'm just trying to get there. <laughs> so way we're going to do this is draw this out. Now this, uh, section here reminds me of a great book that I read by Dr. Alexander Elder. And if you've never re read it, it's, it's worth a read. It's called trading for a living. Okay. And in that book, he likens stock systems to like a three legged stool and our three legs to this pyramid, our three corners are very much the same kind of thing that he talks about in that book. And that is, you're going to need to know when to buy. You're going to need to know what you're buying and when to sell them in the future. So you're going to have to know those three things. This is all that's necessary. Everything else makes it better. Okay. But this is all that you need to be successful. And so in terms of when to buy, what we really are going to want here are precise entries. We want precision. And it's going to mean that you're going to be willing to take some risk to react to that precision. Sometimes it's going to feel like, wow, what am I doing here? <laughs> okay. But uh, that's uh, honestly, Buffett said it. He already told you. You got to be willing to go to bat when blood is seemingly still in the streets. When you feel like you should be taking all the money you have and stuffing it in your mattress, that's usually when you have a market bottom. Uh, okay. Now, the number two thing here is what to buy, right? And so we're going to be dealing with not top VST stocks. We're going to be dealing with the stocks that have the most upside potential in relation to their price decline. And so we're really going to be leveraging an indicator called relative value for the most part, right? But all we really need are acceptable scores. And what you'll find is often they're better than acceptable. They're excellent or better than that. Uh, so really high relative value is kind of the engine that's going to drive the great picks. Okay. And then on the when to sell, we're going to learn some methodology here on trying to cut losers as quickly as possible and letting the winners run. Since some of these stocks can go to double to triple digit gains in days to weeks, we can't run out there with a 5% stop loss. Um, boy, it would be nice if you could, you know, if you could get a hundred percent return on a, on an initial 5% stop loss, those two things are just incompatible. They, <laughs> so what you're going to learn here is this is a system where you probably don't use all the capital at your disposal. You know, this is a system where you slice off a little bit of capital that you're willing to put at risk, right? And then you still want to keep risk in line even on that. Uh, we're going to be roughly using about a 20% stop loss to start. And we're going to be shooting for those potential triple digit returns. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty wide stop loss and it needs to be to get the job done. All right. So that's about as quick as we can cut them, unfortunately, but that's why, you know, you want to limit your exposure a little bit in terms of your capital outlay. So if you got a $5 million account, you're probably not going to do this, you know, with five or even 2 million, but you could certainly slice off about 20% up to depends on you as an individual. This can be all that you do, you know, if you've got a real a much smaller account than that. So it can be anything in between. Everybody's in a slightly different situation. So it can be all that you do, you know, and it can just be a, a, a portion of what you do. All right. So when to buy precise market entries, timing is everything. Let's dig into this a little bit deeper. Uh, and what I mean by this is getting in the day the market blasts off. Now, it's acceptable to wait for one final trigger if you want to do that. 
And I didn't lay that out as well on the last webcast. So congratulations for you guys for being, for not being first, right? But uh, I did put it on the screen. I forgot to comment it on as much as I wanted. But you can wait up till the primary wave turns to up and even the, the open the following day for like the final confirmation piece. If you wait any longer than that, you're letting a tremendous amount of profit potential slip by the wayside. What you're gonna figure out here early on is all the movement is, well, that's not true. The vast majority of the movement comes hot and heavy right in the front loaded first few days to first few weeks, depending on how big the rally is, right? So we're not gonna be still holding on to bottom fishers typically six months off of a bottom. We're already gonna have made our mark <laughs> and move back into those great NVIDIAs, the smooth, steady stock price, smooth, steady earnings, you know, in relation to the stock market. Okay. So, but we're talking about getting in down here. Okay. That's what we're going to aim to do because when we get that right, boy, uh, it can really change your life. So, um, the frustration of course is trying to go a little too soon or even being late because if you just, the too soon, everybody gets, that's why I kind of just, we already talked about it. Number one. Uh, and the number two, you know, most people already understand that. So it's the getting in late that in this methodology really cuts you a couple of ways. This is the most obvious way. If you look at the pink arrow on the screen right now and you look at the price bars to the left of that arrow and if, then if you look at the price bars to the right of that arrow. So you're looking at a classic support and resistance break here. You're, you're breaking prior swing high resistance. A lot of chartists, a lot of technicians like to wait for that comfort, right? If you do that, you're giving up the vast amount of profit potential before you even start. Okay. Uh, you can see it in the price bars. It becomes even more evident when you're tracking it in your portfolios. And we're going to get to that. Uh, but all of the money is on the left side of that arrow, really, you know, vast majority of it anyway. Okay. So uh, we need indicators to get that job done to get us left of the arrow and as close to that bottom as possible, right? And so that we can time the market like this so that we can get in on these blast off situations and do it in a precise way, All right? Uh, I'll tell you this, we even went bottom fishing. There's one here listed back in March of 2022. We even went uh, bottom fishing in 2022 last year five times. And we made money for them. We made more than 30% bottom fishing last year in one of the worst market years in recent memory, right? That's not going to be your ultimate market bottoms, but bottom fishing opportunities do occur even in the midst of substantial market meltdowns or, or you know, turn downs, those kinds of things. So again, that's how you get the more than a couple times a year. So every, if you're lucky, you get the life-changing ones. It was life-changing for me, <clears throat> March of 2020. I made so much money that year, it's mind-blowing, okay? So um, even for me, <laughs> so, so, you know, in just stocks, more than 360% that year, let alone options and everything else, okay? So we're going to show you how you could have done that, okay? Uh, let's get into this and, and take a peek. So when we get it right, even if we buy great stocks, they're going to do really, really well. They're going to take off like a bird, but we can even outperform these, even your Apples and your Teslas and your NVIDIAs and all of them. Okay. Uh, but what we got to do is we got to make this shift from not knowing when to do it to knowing exactly when to do it. That's the first step. Then we'll talk about the right stocks to buy next. Okay. So I'm going to get into the software. Yay. I'm happy to trust me. <laughs> so I've got a market timing graph loaded. And uh, I've already said there's more than 40 of these in the software. Uh, we're going to start with one that just illustrates the point real well. And, um, you know, we can look at others as we go here, and, and we will. So uh, here's a market that's coming down, 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 down. So how do I know to start getting more serious about buying here than I would say there, right? Just like that stochastic example that we showed earlier where the market – Looks like it might want to turn up and then ultimately goes lower, right? Well, we've got these two indicators listed on the bottom. I can put relative timing on here as well, although we use that one with a little bit more sophistication and we're really using just the divergence application there, which is not evident in this market downturn. In other words, 
relative timing went lower here instead of making a higher low. Okay, so I'm gonna take that back off because the two that you need to know the most is you need to know buy to sell ratio below, at or below 0.2, okay? So if I go back to the prior day here, buy sell ratio is at 0.2. Now look, I am sure that there's gonna be some kind of bottom fishing opportunity in the future where the buy sell only goes to 0.22 or something, okay? <laughs> well, we've seen, it's been our experience that 99% of the market bottoms over the last 20 years go to 0.2 or below, okay? Um, so that's when we really start to get excited and we start to start looking for opportunity is when we get down into this zone. All right, now having said that, that's a requirement. Buy to sell ratio at 0.2 or below is what we've established as our requirement. Our MTI is nice to have. And we like to see the MTI go below 0.6 and the lower the better. And there's no such thing as too low on either one of these indicators. We now have well established the lowest that the buy to sell ratio can go is 0.02. We know that now as a result of the COVID uh, collapse, the black swan event, right? Um, we know because there was so much blood so fast there that that indicator absolutely hit its low point. Um, now it can stay down I'll, I'll go ahead and tackle this part of the subject matter as well. It can stay below 0.2 for months, actually. Um, it, the, well, the longest that I remember counting was about 46 days, if I'm, if I'm uh, correct. It, it's more than 40. 40 market days, okay? Uh, so it can be down there for a while. So then the next trick is when, are, you know, when is it actually blasting off? So a couple of things in that regard. One, it usually becomes pretty self-evident by way of what we term a catalyst, right? And so the catalyst is something like Citigroup announcing they turned a profit in the first quarter of 2009. A catalyst is like the Fed saying they're gonna sink trillions and trillions of dollars into the stock market to float it, right? A catalyst is like a change in election that people feel is going to be market friendly, right? Those are catalysts, right? A resolution to a major war, right? All these different kinds of, those are the potential kind of catalyst, the market changing events that happen overnight. You with me? So that right there will let you know typically when a major bottom comes into play. And that's when you have a catalyst for that major bottom. You with me? Uh, and usually those are associated with some of the deeper troughs in the stock market because you were in a mess to begin with, right? And we're not quite there even now with our current economic backdrop, right? Earnings have, have, have begun to falter a little bit, but have yet to even meaningfully turn down. Well, they might, you know, and that would lead to a much deeper trough in the stock market, much deeper. Uh, so that could be the prelude then to that catalyst in the future, Right. It's kind of where we stand now. So I just want to kind of frame things out. I wouldn't be looking for like a, an ultimate stock market bottom tomorrow. <laughs> now, catalysts come when you least expect them. Uh, but still seems like there's a lot of stew to get through here at the moment. Right. But having said all of this, this is the most important part is you start searching for a bottom when the buy to sell ratio goes below 0.2. Then we're waiting for a catalyst or a bottom fishing opportunity if we don't receive a catalyst when the primary wave clicks up, okay? Now, in this case, you had a catalyst the prior day, and that was a, a friendly, uh, market-friendly, a new market-friendly environment, uh, at least perceivably by the investment community. This is not political, it's just facts, okay? And so um, the market went on a nice run here as a result of that catalyst, but even if you waited, just that extra day or even to some portion the following day where mar markets continue to rip, that's when you want to jump on board. But that's about as late as you want to get. And you can see how much movement was here in just the first three days between the catalyst and the confirmation, right? And on major bottoms, that's what it looks like. Uh, major bottoms don't tend to retest. They tend to keep ripping, okay? Now, having said that, you know, it took a little while for the market to get comfortable with the COVID bottom, and rightly so. <laughs> that was a 
wicked, unusual occurrence. Uh, but even if we look at that, I got to go way forward here, don't we? Do, 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 do. Okay. So you, you know, look at the three day whip though here. That looks very familiar, right? So it tried to get cooking. People said, I don't know. We're not too sure. And then it really uh, continued to take off. So any way you want to slice this though, that was a bottom fishing opportunity, literally of a lifetime. We don't use the red markers at all. We're just looking for confirmations of entries if we want to be very, very safe. So the latest you wanted to go would be this day here, right? And you say, what have I done? <laughs> so again, that this is part of the reason why we use the looser stops. This is part of the reason why, you know, you need to see some of these things to know that sometimes things can start a little rocky and but are going to get really good. Okay. Uh, if you get into a position where you start to make a lower low, you need to abandon that campaign. And that's only happened on very rare occasion. Very rare. But then you also know the, bet the next opportunity is going to more than make up for it. And it will. Okay. It always has. And it always will. All right. We've got all the evidence. We've seen it. We've talked about this. If you go back and look at Vector Best Views and just look at bottom fishing, you know, this is not something new. This has been, we've been doing it for years and dec two decades, more than two decades now. All right. So anyway, that's enough to lay this out. I will say this. Once you get to say a confirmed up call, which is generally several weeks to many weeks off of the low, at that point, you're better off heading more towards the top VST, Chapel's Champs, Ruler Stocks, the same old NVIDIA, Apple, Google, Microsoft, <laughs> not Peloton, never Peloton, <laughs> right? The good, safe, undervalued stocks rising in price, okay? All right. Uh, so hopefully that, uh, that late. can you use the do? No, it's too late. I mean... Look, you can, but you're going to see the evidence of why you don't want to wait that long here in a second. Okay. Will it work? Sure. Will it still work probably better than uh, buying Apple's, Google's? Probably, but only marginally at that point. Okay. Uh, we'll show you why. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's what, that's a great segue to here, which is the, ex the right stocks, you know, the explosive ones. And so in simple terms, we want to buy stocks that produce double to triple. Du that's not a typo. Okay. Double to triple digit gains in days to weeks, not years. Of course, that was impossible last year. Hopefully all of you realize that we were still able to squeak out 30% at year end on five campaigns, but you know, the market has to cooperate for you to get the double and triple digit returns that, but that's what we're after. Right. And so the traditional approach taught by some of the best of the best, is only buy something you'd be perfectly happy holding on to if the market shut down for 10 years. And on the whole, that is a very wise, wise statement. It's hard to ever disagree with Buffett on anything, you know, the more you listen to him. Uh, but uh, we're not going to be doing that here because when we do just that, sometimes it doesn't work out as well as we expect. So for example, this was prior to the bottom I just showed. So this was a bottom of the same year. This is still 2016, but it's not the November run. It's the February run before we even got to the November one. So this is a, another example of that. Two bottoms that year. Both of them great if you know what you're doing. Uh, if you just bought Amazon, Facebook, Home Depot, Disney, Visa, Google, Walgreens, Apple, and Gilead, Boy, that's a great retirement portfolio, isn't it? Amazon, Facebook, well, we could probably get some dividend payers in there. <laughs> but they're great stocks, right? Well, congratulations. The S&P beat you. Mm. My Apple was down. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Is that the only time frame Apple was down in three months? It seems like it, doesn't it? <laughs> but you get the point, right? The point is, yeah, you did pretty well here. You In three months' time, you'd made about 10 almost 10%. While well, the market was up 10 and a half, you know. Well, on $20,000, that's still 1936 bucks. That's pretty good. But that's the way I feel about that. There's nothing good about that. Our job as investors is to beat the market. Our job using VectorVest is to cream the market, you know. <laughs> I mean, if we're not doing 
two times market performance at this, we got problems. I'm going to show you why. Mm. You should do more like four, five, sometimes eight. Okay. Uh, not satisfied with those results? Well, I'm not. I'm not I wouldn't be either. Uh, how do I find those big winners then, DD? Well, here we go. All right, so we have a whole folder in VectorVest in the Unisearch tool called Bottom Fishing. All of them are good. All of them are good for somebody. No one is better than any other per se. It comes down to investor temperament. If you go after the blue chips, I would expect blue chip performance, which is what you were just looking at. If you go after better than that, then I would expect better than that performance, which is what you'll get. So if we get it right, and we do something like Blyer's bottom feeders, which is one of our favorite two, okay, two out of maybe five that I think are head and shoulders above the others. This one comes in still kind of on the very aggressive side of things. You can see the price difference in the stocks, for example, right? But you can also see the results in the bottom line. And the engine that's driving this performance is relative value, okay? Uh, also, the fact that relative timing is going to be some of the worst relative timing scores in the entire database, but at the same time, in relation to that, some of the very highest relative value scores, right? So you have extreme upside potential at extreme price points. And what that leads to is extreme returns, of course. So the S&P in this case is up 20%, and this basket of stocks would have been up, say, 96, okay? All right, so let's say you just put 20% or the uh, same $20,000 into this basket, you almost got a 100% return, right? All right, so that way we get into OVV and we're buying the right stocks. So let's show you how to do that. All right, so we brought it all the way forward and we will check Steve out. Check him out. All right, uh, where is primary wave? All right, so we'll walk through blast off day to up call day. Some of you have real time by way of the primary wave to even confirmation day, right? And just take a look at some results and see that that's going to be the sweet spot. And if we wait for something like, well, DEW came in pretty quick here. That's not fair. <laughs> but if we wait something like this or even somewhere in between, you know, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the profit potential is gone. Okay. Typically that DEW was freaking perfect on this one. It's not fair. It's a good question earlier. <laughs> it's <laughs> bottom after bottom. That's not going to do you much good. Okay. You're actually even going to miss some. So anyway, um, primary wave is what you want to use. And if we come up here, though, minimize that. Hopefully, we all saw those dates. I'm going to hope that you did. Uh, and what I'm going to do is go into Unisearch. We'll try to bring things a little bit more recently, too, if we can. But uh, I'm already running a little pressed on time. Uh, so we come over to this Unisearch tab. And in the Unisearch tab, we come to search as bottom fishing. And when we get there, here's all these choices. And when I said picking the ones that are right for you, some of you are going to be willing to take some risk, even if it means a reduction in capital because of the higher returns. And some of you are going to say, well, maybe I just use a little bit more capital and something with a little safer return and everything in between, right? Um, might depend on account size, what have you. They're all good, okay? A couple of our favorites. One, jailbreak. We talk about it in the views all the time. In fact, it's so well thought of by our founder, Dr. Bart Delito, that he has even named it, not only in VectorVest views, in presentations, and even on slides, as the mother of all bottom fishing searches. And so, creator of the VectorVest system, buying safe, undervalued stocks rising in price, is also saying this is to take best advantage of market bottoms, typically your best choice, okay? Uh, and so we talk about change in paradigm. <laughs> He's able to change his paradigm pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, let's go back and run this as of 2020. And we'll go to March. And then if we put the primary wave on here even, so that you can see that as we go. 
right? Primary wave turns up on the 25th. The market started blasting, I believe on the 23rd, okay? We go back to double, doubly confirm. Oops, timing. Hopefully I didn't kill the graph. Ah, come back here. 24th, 24th. That's why we checked. All right, Unisearch. Now, the reason you could start with the 23rd is because you could have run these the night of the 23rd, in which case you would have bought them at some point during the first, hopefully, 30 minutes of the following day, even if you waited for the 10 o'clock confirmation of is the market still rising, okay? So the result is honestly somewhere in between the next two sets of dates, but we'll start here, okay? Quick test all. These are the top 10. These are all the way up to now, of course, 488%. That's 160% annualized, um, I'm sorry, total. Uh, 20, uh, da, 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 da. annualized, yeah, 160% annualized. Market's up 21% annualized, okay? Now, I'm not suggesting that you would have made the 1,500% returns on OVV. Uh, it is not humanly possible. <laughs> you know, or even 900%. It's just not. You ever heard of those two things, fear and greed? <laughs> I mean, you are, listen, if you make it to 1500, you are a greedy SOB, right? <laughs> That's just face the facts. And you're also probably going to take a 99% loss on something at some point. <laughs> but the point more so is how can we have done in a month or two months or three months? Uh, we can all stomach that, right? Uh, so we'll go back and uh, we'll just run it forward. Maybe to the end of April. How's a hundred and twenty six percent in a little over a month? Let's go back to one month. Is there a twenty third here? Yeah. Okay, let's make it easy. Eighty five percent in a month. Hundred and twenty six percent in five weeks. Right? And and it just keeps on marching. If we go to the confirmed up which is when we want to certainly consider stop replacing these bottom fishers. Hopefully we've cut out UCO. We've probably also cut out some of the winners, you know, and even bought some more if it's early on and there's still a lot of upside potential. But the closer you get to this confirmed up signal, that's when you start <clears throat> not replacing, letting the portfolio extinguish and moving on. Uh, one of my very big winners was JNUG. Hmm. Uh, that is one of uh, the ones that I bought because at the time it made a tremendous amount of sense to me <laughs> uh, coming on the back of uh, off the back of that situation. Okay, one of many, <clears throat> but uh, boy, that's interesting, right? Now, if if we start to move away from the bottom, let's say we're a month late and we buy off this green light the 22nd different list of stocks right some are the same we still got j nug and nail got gush now boy those are all good but if we quick test you know your performance is coming down even if i take this out another month okay so we're a month late and we'll hold a month longer 52 percent, still really good so they kept going right Let's start a month after that. Start on the confirmed up call. Go forward June, July, August. That's actually shocking that it's even trying to keep up at this point. <laughs> but it is deteriorating, you know, and that's the, normally it's more emphatic than that. Like if you go back and you study the 40 bottoms, uh, and uh, and you do this even on a day by day kind of analysis, you'll see what we're talking about. Where uh, almost every occasion, you know, you start to see very decipherable performance differences. If it's not a black swan event like this one was, where the stock market just kept ripping seemingly day after day for a year, 
Um, there was bobbles there for, for sure, but <laughs> you know, anyway, you get the point. So now look, not everybody, the one thing that some of you I'm sure have either commented on, I'm not reading the chat yet. I am flying solo because I need to keep my head about me here. Um, I try to give you guys the best stock market guidance I can provide and it's tough for me to do with distractions. Okay. So when we come back here, some of you might say, well, I'm not buying stocks that are one and two bucks. Well, you know, that's where the big money is. Unfortunately, that's part of the deal because while they're one and two dollars and maybe 17 or and such, right? If they're not an ETF, look at the relative value on this stock. It can't go any higher than that. It can't go any higher than that. It can't go much higher than that. Twos, 188s. And what you're going to find is in the ba on the backside of bear markets, like true bear markets, you're going to see these kinds of numbers on stocks again. You will at some point in the future, maybe sooner than you think. We'll see, right? But uh, it's, 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 the, it's the blood that creates the opportunity. And what's really cool about VectorVest is there wasn't anybody thinking about SSL or IVR or RWT or GPMT. Not anywhere else you're going to look, Okay. Now, if we go to um, Blyer's bottom feeders, that will bring the stock prices up at least a little bit. You still have two, 188, 187, 141, right? If we come over here to the left, the prices are 25, 2, 6, 10, 2, 3. And you have a little bit more liquidity typically sometimes in this search as well. It's, it's a pretty good, happy, uh, not quite medium, right? But it's far less aggressive than jailbreak. And still, uh, the results sometimes can be even better. Um, so, you know, like, for example, if we took this all the way to August, it's up 163. If we come back here a little bit, you know, because you say you want to start coming off the gas at the confirmed up 93 of it was just right there, you know. Um, as you're getting into these higher stock prices, what happens? You know, the, the potential there is not quite as great. So that's, that's the balance that you got to work with so that, you know, maybe I'm comfortable with Russell because Russell at least has to pre-qualify to be on the index. You know, you quick test them 97%. How many winners are we looking at with all these things? Right. I, I'm not happy with that. I'm not touching those things. That's fine. This may not be for you. It's not for everyone. You want to go blue chips? Let's go blue chips. Right now you're in Delta Airlines, Train, Dr. Horton, Transdigum, PNC, Stanley BNB, Sun Life. Right? What do you think the performance is going to be like before I even run it? Congratulations, the market beat you. Almost. <laughs> so when you start getting up into the blue chips, you know, it's a blue chip. They just they're blue chips. They they're steady. They're just not going to run. You know, uh, now I will say bottom in, bottom out, year in, year out, decade in, decade out, this blue chip bargains, while it may not have beaten the Teslas of the world here, it traditionally does. Um, so it is, if you're going to go blue chips, you're still better off doing this has been our experience, you know, than buying those traditional blue, just the traditional blue chips. You're at least still trying to buy up the blood. Okay. Uh, you can do it with S and P stocks you know, and everything in between. Um, so S and P RT, you know, APA Corp, Occidental Petroleum. We could have bought, you know, Buffett bought it at like 60. <laughs> 61% with S and P 500 stocks. Okay. Lots of energy in here. That's where the blood was, man. And then the mighty vengeance <laughs> to come. All right. But there was Macy's in here and um, Carnival and you know, APA. Actually, that might still be petroleum. Yeah. All right. So anyway, lots of petroleum in here. We are going to tackle that subject here in a bit. You still don't want to buy them all. Uh, basically, you want to favor... What would be, in this case, the top two, Apache and Occidental, typically? Mm. Okay. Let's just quick test those two. Hundred and thirty and forty. 
That's 77% on just petroleum stocks. Pretty groovy. Oh, I was looking at value. Those are values, not prices. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> All right, sorry. 5, 10, 17, 3 uh, on the stock prices here. You bought Occidental at 10 instead of 60. That's pretty good. Okay, cool. So I could show countless examples of this. There's no gotcha moments anywhere. Um, if anything, you get another opportunity on the backside that does you know, even better than you would have done the first time because the lower the markets go, the more they rebound in the future. Okay. Supposing we don't become Japan, <laughs> which I guess is of some concern. Uh, but no, this has always worked, and uh, therefore we got to believe it always will, right? Until proven otherwise. So we just don't worry about that kind of stuff. When you start worrying about that kind of stuff, yeah, then that gets in the way. All right, so let's system, right? You got to not use your noodle as much as you want. Noodles get in the way, even for us, even for me. All right, so how could knowing precisely the right stocks to buy change things for you? What do you think? How could uh, how could buying the right has the, has this opened some eyes out there? Hopefully, I'm gonna have to start checking your pulse. <laughs> do you have the same searches in the UK? You sure do. Now look, um, there's a lot more liquidity here in the states. I would check them out. Yeah, I would uh, I would go check and do some of the study. And I would start at some of the more uh, opportune ones just to see if there's any value in pursuing further. So I'd look at March nine of or March uh, six to nine of of two thousand. Um, geez, that was two thousand nine, right? March six nine two thousand nine. I'd look at uh, two thousand twenty. You know, March. I'd look at uh, maybe the um, the uh, February or October or November lows of 2016. So it's pretty simple. If I if I go back to the uh, market timing graph here, all you got to do is this. I'll even tackle some things now, right? So if we look at this patch here, 2019, you know, there was a bottom fishing opportunity here, pretty short lived. That's what I mean. Sometimes the market goes lower. When you get to this one, there was money to be made there, right? Even the next one, it was short. That's how, that's what we did this past year. But then eventually you get to this sucker, you know? <laughs> and so even if for some reason you fell asleep at the wheel here and took a little bit of punishment, this one makes up for all that. See? So you got to keep going to bat. That's the hard part for folks, but you want to just test some of these bottoms and you don't want to wait for the confirm calls. You want to use the primary wave. Okay. And the next day being the absolute latest, realizing the blast off day is always that make you money. Risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. As you can see, I do enjoy what Buffett has to share. I think it's uh, simple yet very profound when you sit down and actually think about them. Uh, having no plan is not an option. At least this guy had a backpack, or a backpack, a parachute. <laughs> backpack isn't going to do him a lot of good, is it? Uh, what that leads to is emotional trading and flushing money down the drain. So here they are, five to 10 stocks per campaign. Any more, you're just diluting returns. Any less, you're taking far too much risk. When you're new, start with 10. It is like a bell curve. Seven and eight tends to be the sweet spot. Remember how they used to grade you back in school? <laughs> right? <laughs> Somewhere between five to 10 stocks is what works best. Never risk more than one to 2% of the total port value in any single trade, okay? So if we're going to use a 15 or a 20% stop loss, you know, I need to make sure that I'm not risking more than 1% of the portfolio value with those stops. We have a equation that makes that awful easy in a course we're going to talk about here in a bit. But if you just put your mind to work, it's not that hard to come up with the answers. Okay. Uh, don't buy more than two stocks per industry group ever, never, ever, never. Even if sometimes it works better going 10 petroleum stocks, it's just not at some point that is going to really bite people, you know? Um, for example, think about what Saudi Arabia did just last week, right? They said, well, we're, uh, we're closing down the taps a little bit. We're going to stop producing a million of these barrels a day, you know, and 
petroleum soared in that case. But what if they say, well, we're going to start producing 2 million more barrels a day, right? That can, that'll submarine your whole, 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 whole portfolio overnight. Many of you who can't even trade in the pre-market, nor should you for many of you, you know, can't even get out that quick, right? So don't do that. No more than two stocks per industry group. You want to favor ratcheting or trailing stop losses? We use Profit Locker. And we, we, in order to get to double or triple digit gains, while I'm not going to give you the answer, that should be self-evident on where you want to set your target. It's not going to be 50%. You're not going to get any triple digit gains with 50%. Okay. And I already gave you some of the starting values you want to think about uh, for the, for the low price, right? Five, allow your portfolio to extinguish itself by not replacing stocks that hit your stop loss once a confirmed up signal is achieved. Okay. So if you got 10 stocks still, and you should in most cases, or wherever many you started with, right? When you get to a confirmed up signal, when you sell something, you stop replacing. So now you have nine stocks. The next day, maybe you have eight stocks. The next week, maybe now you have seven stocks. Two weeks later from that, maybe you have two stocks. Three weeks later from that, maybe you have zero stocks. But all that capital is somewhere else, okay? So that we just maximize the opportunities with the profit locker. It's smart enough and wide enough to keep us out of some shenanigans from time to time is what this graph shows. And smart enough to get us in near the peaks on most occasions, get us out rather, okay? Um, that way our portfolios start to look like this. And this graphic is really meant with one intent and purpose and that is, <clears throat> generally speaking, if you find yourself in a campaign where for a couple of weeks it's not making any ground, in fact it's losing ground for those couple of weeks, you need to think about shutting the whole thing down and moving on to something else. Okay? All right, so choosing to know when to sell is important because if we don't know, we're in trouble. So we need to know so we can get out when we need to. All right, so I'm going to skip that question. You're here today because you want to take advantage of your opportunities. You want to beat Tom Brady when he's got his guard down. That's, yeah, hard for me to say because I'm a Bucks fan. He won us a Super Bowl, another one, finally. <laughs> that was a big day for my guy right there. I can't remember his name. He took advantage of his opportunity. He caught the pass. He's the quarterback. All right, you want to be confident in knowing what you're doing. So know that your system is going to determine your success if you allow for it. You want to move from uncertainty to certain certainty on precise entries. You want to move from ordinary to extraordinary with your stock selection. You want to move from not knowing when to sell to knowing exactly when to sell, and you have a choice. And that choice, my friends, is do it now and do it alone with what I've taught you because you certainly can or because you are still going to make mistakes until you are truly and utterly convinced and have extreme faith in this process that you can still seek out further guidance and the comfort that goes along with that. And you can do that in a course that we have. It's five weeks long. There is more information in it. We start getting into pricing structures and more intricacies with the timing indicators and uh, more evidence and more data in terms of the searches to use and uh, answer any questions about those management techniques and you know, seeing the evidence that they work and all that kind of stuff, right? It's not for everyone. I'll be the first to admit it. I admitted that early on in this webcast. But if this is something that has hit a chord with you and you do want to try to, to get these kinds of returns at the next major market bottom and some fun returns in the interim, right? Abe Lincoln said, if I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first four hours sharpening the ax. That means learn what needs to be learned before we go out there and try to do it. <laughs> There's always more to it, right? The secret to precision bottom fishing uh, course, it's all digital. We are going to have live mastery sessions where you can ask questions to either me or Jerry. Okay. Uh, we're going to cover the mindset, more precision on the entries, more detail on the stocks to buy. I got questions uh, from the webcast I've already done, you know, and the reality is there's there's more things to talk about. Uh, 
critical management tactics and the complete plan. It's, uh, it's something, I, I'll put it this way. When you leave this course, you will know precisely how to set up the instruments in VectorVest to where all you got to do is turn it on and it'll tell you what you need to do every single day, every single second of every single minute of every single hour of every single market day. All you got to do is click go. <laughs> well, you don't click go in VectorVest, do you? You turn on the genius, right? And then you, you let it tell you paper trade for you, but then give you the answers on what it's doing. Or if you have RoboTrader, you can actually just accept the orders and they go through right to your brokerage. Okay. Might have to pick RoboTrader up as an additional expense if you're going to do it that way, but it's worth it. It makes it easy. Okay. So here's the six weeks and here's the mastery sessions. It's going to be $5.95. Now, a lot, uh, listen, I can count on more than both hands and both feet, maybe 10 times over, <laughs> maybe a hundred times over. How many people have paid $2,000 for this course? Why? Because you can make $2,000 in two minutes when you get it right. <laughs> 600 bucks. Here are the, I'm going to put that out into the chat. Okay. And I'll start answering questions here in a second. Just let me get through this last piece. Okay. And so, um, I'm going to put that link into the chat so that you guys, all you got to do is click on it. All right. So when you click that, oh, sometimes I got to click it twice. I don't know why that is. There we go. It'll bring you right to this page here. Here's the 595. There is the retail price. Way down off the retail price, okay? Lucky day. It is your lucky day. Um, but that's only right, too, from one perspective. It, it is recorded. Again, though, you do have the three mastery sessions. They are going to be Tuesdays at 2, uh, from April 18th to April 25th to May 2nd. Once you do the ordering on the website, you'll start to receive, within about 24 hours, you'll start to receive confirmations, of course, and then more importantly, um, you know, how to get to the course, all that kind of stuff. And then as they become necessary, you'll get the invites to these mastery sessions as well. So it, it'll all come. Trust me, trust me when I say we've got that down to a science at this point. If for some reason you don't get one by the morning of those dates, definitely give us a call. Okay. Uh, those are live. If you can't make them, they are going to also be recorded and posted up to the uh, to the curriculum website. So everybody's going to have an opportunity to at least see the questions that people are asking and the answers to those questions. Usually, somebody's asking your question for you. You know, if you can't be there, normally everybody's thinking around the same things uh, with the questions. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, so that's that. Let me go back and look at uh, some of the. Uh, chats. I can't see YouTube guys. Sorry for that. Uh, but I've got some here and again, they're probably asking your questions for you. We hope. How about coaching after the course is over? Well, you know, you can always feel free to shoot me an email or something. Um, but there's no further coaching, uh, after the coach, after the course is over, you, there shouldn't, there, there really shouldn't need to be. Um, but if you want to check yourself out say, Hey Steve, am I thinking right here? Is this a blast off day or whatever? Yeah, I can give you uh, my opinion on that for sure. Now, look, um, we normally need a 24-hour grace period in response to an email. So you got to understand those kinds of things. But as you also saw, you know, waiting for the primary wave up, there's some time there, okay? Uh, let's see, elite members call customer support. Elite members. Uh, that should be the lowest price possible, the $5.95. That's less than half the list price. So that's the lowest price you can get is five ninety five. Okay, uh, Canadian stocks. Uh, this can be done on the Canadian markets. I know Stan has done quite a bit with bottom fishing there. I know that one for sure. Um, and jailbreak tends to be one that works well up there, just like here in the states. There are other options. You can go back, test it out, and um, and do some some work, and you'll find that it, it works. It works. Every, it should work everywhere. Okay. I feel the most comfortable in saying that with the U.S. and with Canada, and everybody should investigate for themselves. Okay, let's see. How about uh, elite cost? So five ninety five is the cost for everybody here, guys. 
Okay, do we have the same searches in the UK? You should, yes, we, we had that question earlier, didn't we? I'm curious, what is the duration for the call options which would work? You know, that's a great question because it, it leads me back to one of my most fond mem remembrances of ever working here at VectorVest. Um, we, Dr. Delito and I, and I think Glenn and, and uh, someone else, probably Laura, if I had to guess, um, from Ohio, we were all at a money show in Las Vegas. There's probably more team than that, actually. That's a big show. Uh, this was back in 2009. And those shows, if you remember, are in May. And there were a contingent of people there that had learned bottom fishing from us from before, and they bought call options on the stocks. And they bought call options on stocks like Citigroup. And uh, I think it was like uh, one of the casinos. Um, ah, it's always the one that moves around. I can't think of the name of it right now. But anyway, they, they took the the jailbreak selections from that time. And I think some was even like leveraged. Uh, I think it's some call options on some already leveraged ETFs for the financial space and, you know, all this stuff. Anyway, we didn't have to sell anything that whole week. Those, those, those people were talking, they were actually pulling people into the booth. They were like, you guys have got to come and learn how to do this, man. I was a nurse. I'm retired. You know, I had 10 years to go you know, before my retirement. Uh, listen, Vector Vest already made me a multimillionaire, and now I'm just swimming in money, you know, and that kind of stuff. And it was just great, you know. Um, so, yeah. Now, typically, if you're going to do this bottom fishing and you saw that, like, if it's a major bottom, so if you receive a catalyst, right, like if um, – <laughs> I don't know about what could be a great catalyst right now. The The problem is they normally come out of nowhere, you know. I'm not sure the resolution of the war in Ukraine, although that would probably give you a, at least a, a a reasonable bounce, you know. Or uh, I'm not fond on the lowering of interest rate ones. <laughs> I think that's going to be, yeah, oh, wait a minute. There's probably a problem here, <laughs> right? Uh, so coming up with a catalyst is tough, but... Bottom line, if you have what you believe to be a true catalyst, I think you want to buy at least nine months, right? But on an ordinary basis, uh, I think a traditional strike is probably uh, in order, somewhere between one and three months. Yeah, I generally, when I buy, I like to buy about three months to try to be as right and as right as possible. Yeah, but the stocks jump so much, you know, in the first few days. And so uh, I wouldn't buy like way out of the money or anything. There's no need to do that. You, you, you you just buy your at the money or your one strike out of the money kind of thing, typically. I don't think you need to be in the money with those either because uh, of how much it's going to jump. But uh, So use a little bit of reason. There's more to know there. We can't get into it in this webcast, right? But it sounds to me like you understand options to some degree. So, um, yeah, I would say somewhere between one to three months. And look, in a way, it's the lower the, lower the scores. Um the better the run is going to be. The challenge right now for folks is that the buy to sell ratio has been down and below 0.2 a couple of times. I wasn't going to do this, but I am going to do it now. I'm going to give you one final secret. <laughs> Just give it all away, Steve. <laughs> it's not a secret. All this stuff has been in the views for years. It's just nobody reads them. You know? None of this is a secret. If I come over here into uh, views, right, and I go back, this is what's been missing here. So I had some people that took this course back in December, and they say, hey, you know, we haven't had one since, and they know why they haven't had one. So this is why. So if we come in here, let's go to, um, this is what you want to find, okay? We're going to go back to 2020. We're going to go back to March. We're going to go back to that blast off day, which is the 24th, right? We're going to come down here. And we're going to say, wait a minute. Bottom fishing searches, yeah? Wait a minute. Bottom fishing searches, yeah? And look at the percentages. 
when it's the big bottom, like when you go out the nine months, you're looking for these kinds of things. You're looking for strategies that are up 25% that day. Oops, let me find one that's in both. It's Russell, isn't it? 24 that day and 53 in the last five days. It's already up 53% in the last five days, 24% that day. And remember, it went up 167% over the next three months. See what I mean? So this is often what is going to help detail the explosive day for you is that when you get into the basket and you're up 10% in like 30 minutes, <laughs> right? Or uh, if you've got some short dated calls and you want to roll them into longer dated calls, you know, whatever. But uh, this is the... Uh, this is this is this is the dead giveaway. That's what that's this is the kind of stuff you see. Like if if I think about this, I also think about March of 2009 and I think about situations where when we bought our stocks, many of them were already up 20% or more by 30 minutes into the market that day. Okay? Those are the big ones. Because those were the two bottom fishing. So if we're talking bottom fishing opportunity of a lifetime, you're going to see these kinds of percentages and you're going to see them fast. If we're talking ordinary market bottom, we still want to find these searches. That's what's been keeping people out of trouble and trying to find and decipher kind of a blast off primary wave buy. Uh, there hasn't been a lot of good confirmation. You also prefer to see just like a wall of bottom fishers when at all possible. Okay. But anyway, uh, and you'll see that more often than you think. Okay, that's the final piece. You've, you know, hey, look. Believe it or not, there's still even more to learn. <laughs> All right. Don't stop losses and buybacks at lower bottoms kill you on wash sale adjustments. Well, that would be provided you're going to be buying the same ones and you're not. Typically. So, no. Uh, now, I wouldn't buy the same one that you bought a month ago if, it, if that were the case, but the wash sale rule is only extended for 30 days too. Now, one of the things that we do in the actual um, genius that you follow accounts for wash sales. So we say don't rebuy the same stock that you've purchased for, 30, for 31 days. So we, we account for all that stuff. Yeah, there's no need to worry about it. Mm. All right, groovy guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, it's been my priv privilege to be here. It's a subject near and dear to my heart. It's something that I have done quite a lot. People watched me do it in real dollars, real time last year in one of the most challenging markets you'll ever see. And it was not easy, <laughs> but we were able to squeak away with about 30% in bottom fishing campaigns last year. At one point, it was up more than 40. That last one hurt a little bit. <laughs> but anyway... We'll see you guys soon. Good luck. Hopefully we see you in the course. See you then. Got to go. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Get to this website. <laughs>